and welcome to this training on serving voters with disabilities in Florida's polling places. As poll workers, you are key to the successful administration of elections in our state. It is important that you have the information you need to operate elections that are accessible to everyone who is eligible to vote. As you know, it is vital to the health of our democracy that all eligible voters have the opportunity to exercise their right to vote. However, some voters with disabilities may find that they face challenges while voting. More than 13% of Floridians have disabilities. Some people have obvious disabilities, while other disabilities are less apparent. During the election, you should expect to serve voters with disabilities. The purpose of this training is to prepare you to make the polling place an accessible and welcoming environment for all voters. Later, we will provide tips on serving voters with specific disabilities, such as visual impairment. But first, let's talk about some guiding principles that can help you make sure voters with disabilities have a positive experience as they exercise their right to vote. If you act with these principles in mind, you will be on solid ground, even when you're not familiar with a particular disability or don't know that a voter even has a disability. This is the common thread in everything you'll hear today. Treat every voter with dignity and respect. Assume that voters with disabilities are as capable as you are. And while performing your duties, show the qualities and values that exemplify professionalism. After all, isn't this how we all wish to be treated? The words we choose reflect our attitudes and values. That's why it's important to use person-first language when referring to people with disabilities. Person-first language puts the person before the disability. For example, use the term people with disabilities rather than the disabled or disabled people. If a voter is blind, she is a person with a visual impairment, not a blind person. If you're not sure what term to use, that's okay because labels are not necessary anyway. For example, if you want to tell a coworker that a voter needs assistance, you can say, please go help that woman in the blue shirt or please help the man who is using the wheelchair. Of course, it's important to welcome all voters with a smile and a polite greeting. However, some voters may prefer or need you to communicate with them in writing or through assistive devices. Other voters may enter the polling place and the polling booth with a companion to assist them or an interpreter for communication. Speak at a normal speed and volume directly to the voter, not to the companion or interpreter. Do not shout. Shouting is unprofessional and makes it harder for the voter to understand what you are saying. Even if the voter has an interpreter, look at and speak directly to the voter. Some voters use assisted devices to help them access the polling place. An assistive device can be anything from a wheelchair or scooter to a cane, special eyeglasses, or a hearing aid. Some voters will use computer software or hardware to communicate or make choices. You should treat these devices as an extension of the voter. Do not touch a voter's assistive device unless the voter asks you to. Although you may think you are being polite or helpful, many people with disabilities do not want or need assistance. If you try to help a voter without asking first, it may be perceived as disrespectful or as a violation of a voter's personal space. Do you need any assistance with that? Everything, yeah. Okay. Some voters may enter the polling place with a service animal. It is important to remember that service animals are not pets. They are trained to provide specific types of help for individuals with disabilities. In the polling place, the service animal is on the job and must not be distracted, so do not interact with the animal in any way. Think of the service animal as an extension of the voter, just like an assistive device. In some cases, you may not be able to tell why the voter has a service animal. Do not ask for that private information. By the way, service animals are not required to wear an identification badge, harness, sign, or symbol. A lot of people assume that they can come up and pet Ranger, but Ranger is working. I need his attention to be focused on me. Allow the voter to proceed with the service animal so long as the animal is under control and not a threat to anyone. All voters have the right to make choices and maintain their privacy. 
Some voters with disabilities may want assistance in the polling place, others may not. Tell every voter, if you need help with anything, just let me know. If the person does not choose to have assistance, respect that choice. It is disrespectful to try to help someone who does not want help. However, if the voter requests help, provide it without judgment. People need to be patient and listen to what I have to say. A voter is not required to disclose any information about his or her disability. Do not judge the abilities of the voter or ask why the voter needs an assistive device, service animal, or other accommodation. I can navigate around the room just fine, but I need large print in order to read. I'd rather not be asked why. I'm uncomfortable talking to strangers about my disability. You may be concerned that it is difficult to know when and how to help voters with disabilities. This difficulty is easily solved if you politely make your help available to everyone. Thanks for coming out today. Please let me know if I can help you with anything. Of course, before voters even come to the polling place, we can do a lot to increase their access and provide a more positive experience. Here are some steps we can take to provide safe, convenient access for voters with disabilities. Post signs that give voters with disabilities information they need to access the polling place. Create a clear path to all parts of the polling place so voters can have safe access. Make sure furniture and equipment is accessible to all voters, including those who use a wheelchair or other assistive device. And have accessible supplies ready for voters with various disabilities. Let's talk about signage. In addition to signs directing all voters to the proper location, Signs will be needed to direct voters with disabilities to the accessible parking, ramps, and accessible path to the polling room. Signs should be highly visible, and they should be simple and clear as possible. It is also vital that the voters have a clear path to all needed areas within the polling place. This includes walkways, the sign-in area, and the polling booth itself. Remove furniture or other obstacles that could make it difficult for a voter who uses a wheelchair or other mobility device, such as a cane, to move about safely. Clear a path wide enough for a voter walking beside a companion or with a service dog. Keep cords, cables, wires, and other tripping hazards out of the way. So, how will you know whether a path is accessible? Put yourself in the voter's place. If you had a visual impairment or limited mobility, would you have difficulty going through, up or down a pathway, step, ramp, threshold, or curb, or in and out of the polling place or room? Also, make sure that voters who use a wheelchair or other mobility device can access the sign-in table and voting booth. The layout of the furniture is really important. I once ran into a table while trying to get to the voting booth. Finally, make sure that accessible voting supplies and equipment are readily available and that you know how to use them. Commonly needed supplies include sample ballots in alternative formats, such as large print or braille, and the declaration to secure assistance form. You may need pens and paper for voters who prefer to communicate in writing, as well as extra chairs for voters with limited mobility or endurance. Of course, accessible voting machines are of the utmost importance. Touch screens and other accessible marking devices allow citizens to vote with little or no assistance and in privacy. All voters with disabilities have the option to use accessible voting equipment, and each polling place must have at least one accessible voting system. Accessible voting machines must be set up and operational before the polls open. Don't wait until a voter asks to use the device to set it up and become familiar with the operation of the equipment ahead of time so you can explain it to a voter if requested to do so. All of these strategies can help you provide a positive experience for voters. Now let's take a look at some more specific examples about how some voters with particular disabilities interact with the voting process. Some voters have disabilities that affect their speech or motor skills, or both. Such disabilities can be caused by many factors, such as stroke, cerebral palsy, or a cognitive disability. Hello. Hey. Thanks for coming out to vote. May I see your ID, please? Yes. Thank you. Okay. 
And let me find, oh, I'm sorry. Here you go. Let me find your name. Okay. And just sign right there on this line. Don't worry about um, signing upside down. Can you hold the seat, please? I'm sorry, could you repeat that, please? Please, can you hold the seat down? Yes, I can. When interacting with a voter who has difficulty communicating through speech, keep these thoughts in mind. Assume the voter is as capable as you are. Be courteous, be patient, and listen carefully. Don't try to complete the voter's sentences and don't interrupt or correct the voter. Avoid asking questions that require long or complex responses. Politely ask for clarification if needed. Don't pretend to understand what the voter is saying if you actually do not understand it. If the voter seems amenable, it may be okay once the voter is done speaking to restate what you think the voter said and ask the voter to confirm if that is correct. Most people who have visual impairments are not totally blind. In fact, it is not always immediately obvious that a voter has a visual impairment. For example, a voter might be able to navigate the polling room but be unable to read, or vice versa. Some voters with visual impairments use an assistive device such as a cane. Others use a service animal. A voter might walk slowly to have time to anticipate curbs, thresholds, steps, and other obstacles. Here are some tips for interacting with a voter who has a visual impairment. Introduce yourself to the voter when he or she comes in, and again if you speak to the voter later. Ask permission before guiding the voter or moving his or her assistive device. If you receive the voter's permission, describe what you will be doing. In a large print ballot? Absolutely. Do you need any assistance? Yes, please, that would be great. Okay. Just tell me what you'd like me to do. Get on to my left-hand side. Certainly. Thank you. Okay. And just guide me there. If the voter requests assistance, offer the voter your elbow or shoulder to hold on to. Do not push or pull the voter. If the voter has a service animal, walk on the voter's side opposite the animal. If you escort the voter into the voting booth, Honor the voter's privacy, but be ready to help the voter again once he or she has finished voting. Mobility impairments differ in type and severity, so be prepared to respond to individual circumstances. For example, the voter may use a walker, wheelchair, scooter, or crutches, or the voter may not use a mobility device, but may still have difficulty walking. A voter who has respiratory trouble may not appear to have a mobility impairment, but may in fact need to move slowly or occasionally sit down. Again, do not judge the abilities of a voter or ask the voter why he or she needs assistance. Any empty booth that you'd like, we have an accessible booth if you'd like to use that. Thank you. Let me know if you need help with anything. Appreciate it. A voter's wheelchair, scooter, or other assistive device is an extension of the voter. Do not lean on, push, or touch a voter's assistive device without receiving permission first. Canes, crutches, and walkers are used for balance and stability. Touching or grabbing these devices can cause a voter to stumble or fall. If you do receive permission to push a wheelchair, start out slowly and follow the voter's instructions. When talking with a voter in a wheelchair, sit in a chair yourself so that you are on the voter's eye level and know the location of accessible parking paths and, if available, water fountains and restrooms. It is not always obvious that a voter is deaf or hard of hearing or how significant the hearing loss might be. A voter may wear an undetectable hearing device, such as a hearing aid or cochlear implant. The voter may lip read or use sign language or both. The voter may also come in with an interpreter. Um, I'll be interpreting for him. Can I step in? Absolutely. Here are some tips for interacting with a voter who is deaf or hard of hearing. Maintain eye contact with a voter. Make sure the voter can see your face. Speak at a normal speed and volume. Do not shout. Shouting is unprofessional and makes it harder for the voter to understand you. If the voter does not understand what you are saying, rephrase it or write it down. If you need to get the voter's attention when his or her back is turned, politely tap the voter's shoulder. And if the voter comes in with an interpreter, 
Look at and speak with the voter, not the interpreter. Shouting at me doesn't really work. I'm a lip reader. If you shout at me, it's going to change the entire expression of your face. And I won't have any idea of what you're trying to say to me. Besides, nobody likes to be shouted at. Hmm? Sometimes it can be challenging to know whether a voter has a disability or whether the voter wants help. Some disabilities are not visible to a poll worker. For example, some voters have cognitive disabilities. Some voters with service-connected disabilities or post-traumatic stress disorder have a service animal to assist or comfort them. Others have epilepsy and their service animal can alert them to an impending episode. If you keep in mind the principles we mentioned at the beginning of this video, you'll be prepared to serve voters who have hidden disabilities. Ask every voter if and how you can assist. Provide assistance without judgment. Be willing to do whatever is reasonably possible to help. And remember to treat everyone equally and provide the best possible service to all voters. Florida is fortunate to have dedicated poll workers to help ensure that our elections are accessible and that voters have a positive voting experience. All voters, including those with disabilities, rely on your commitment to treating them with dignity and respect and supporting them as they exercise their fundamental right to vote. Thanks for coming out today. If you have any questions, please ask your training facilitator.